Hello everyone and welcome to another insightful episode of Mims and Naps podcast series. I'm your host, Tiffany Shah, and today we're diving into an exciting frontier in the treatment of neurovascular diseases, which is biodegradable stents and drug eluting stents. These innovations have revolutionized the field of interventional neurology, offering new hope for improved patient outcomes. And to help us understand these game-changing technologies, I'm delighted to welcome a distinguished expert, Dr. Abhishek Kotwa. Dr. Abhishek is a highly regarded interventional neuroradiologist with over 10 years of experience. Dr. Abhishek's academic achievements are remarkable. From completing his MD and DMB in radio diagnosis to earning a DM in neuroimaging and interventional radiology from NIMHANS, he has consistently excelled in this field. Additionally, his fellowship in neuro and vascular intervention has equipped him to handle some of the most complex cases with precision and empathy. So thank you for joining us, Doctor, and it is an honor to have you with us. Thank you for quite introduction. So now, now Doctor, let's dive straight in. So biodegradable stents are gaining attention in the field of neuro interventional neurology. So can you start by explaining the mechanics? behind these stents and how do they differ from traditional metallic stents? Okay, so biodegradable stents are basically advanced generational stents. So if we divide them by generations, so okay. So first generation were drug eluting stents only and uh, slowly in second generation, some polymers uh, were coated around the stent apart from the drug. And uh, in third generation, we are having biodegradable coated stents. They are drug eluting also and they are having biodegradable coating also. And in uh, next uh, latest stage, only they are made up of the polymer uh, free drugs. Okay, so they will uh, disappear in the body after some time. So advantage is basically whenever we put a stent, stent is basically a foreign body. So our body acts in the form of uh, formation of thrombus or some uh, foreign body reaction will happen. Uh, so basically these stents, uh, they'll absorb in the body. So after some time, the thing will remain inside. So we don't have to give antiplatelets for the long time and uh, they will uh, disappear within the wall of the vessel. So nothing extra will be there uh, inside the vessel. So obviously we'll be having less chances of uh, uh, Restenosis, less chances, uh, less and less uh, lead of the what we say antiplatelet drugs. So in this way, they are much better. Yes, I think that is really insightful and enlightening. And yeah. I think uh, it is so fascinating to see how actually these stents work so yeah. differently compared to the metallic uh, stents also. So now building on that only, Doctor, what are the key advantages of biodegradable stents if you could explain in detail uh, in the treatment of neurovascular diseases especially and specifically how do they contribute to long-term patient outcomes? Yeah, so in neuro, they are actually a recent thing. Uh, they are being used in cardiology since very long time, since uh, I think one decade. But in neurology, they are uh, now recent thing only, and uh, at very few places they are being used. And uh, that too, in uh, older generation, first or second generation stents are mostly used, and uh, newest generation stents are still in the trial phase. Uh, so advantage is uh, like firstly they'll be coated with the drug so then elevate the proliferation uh, uh, of uh, endothelium excessive proliferation which leads to later on uh, uh, restenosis of the stent so this phenomena is uh, blocked by the this kind of drug eluting stents and also they'll uh, uh, decrease the new uh, growth so uh, that's why they reduce uh, 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 having possibility of uh, instant restenosis and uh, excessive uh, thrombus and excessive endothelial proliferation around the stent and uh, they'll be having uh, different kinds of st struts so basically older generation uh, they were having longer stents now uh, newer generations they are having thin struts so uh, thin struts also they will have an uh, advantage in the form of reduced platelet activation and then the reduced footprints so all these are advantages yes i think those are truly remarkable and now coming to some drug eluting stents, so could you elaborate on the types of drugs typically used in these stents for neurovascular diseases 
and how do these just specifically target issues like thrombosis or early stenosis in the brain vascular rate yeah so uh, it depends on the again generation of the stent so first generation stents uh, uh, cipher stent or texas stent they are having mostly cyrolimus or pal palcitexel coating with, with them uh, our newer generation uh, uh, like uh, resolute olix uh, and uh, other stent newest generation is biofreedom stent so they are having biolimus coating with them Biolimus, Evarolimus, Jotarolimus. So uh, this coating is also getting improved, and uh, so slowly we are switching from the basic serolimus to the uh, biolimus, which is having a less chances of the uh, hypersensitivity reaction and the better effects. Yes, I think that is something excellent, and I think your explanation is also really interesting, uh, incredible, doctor. So now, you know, while these technologies have got tremendous promises, so there also must be unique challenges with it. So are there any specific complications or risks associated with biodegradable or drug eluting stents that clinicians should uh, be particularly mindful of? Yeah, obviously. So this is also a new thing, and uh, that's why uh, some but dis disadvantages are there. That's why they are in the trial phase. So possible disadvantage can include uh, first uh, they are drug coated, so obviously uh, they are having uh, side effects of drug in the form of uh, uh, as we are blocking the excessive endothelialization, so it can hamper with the normal endothelialization also. So uh, endothelialization will be hampered. Second thing is uh, drug may have uh, phenomenon of uh, hypersensitivity, cytotoxic effects will be there. Okay, so other thing is we are going, uh, as I told, we are going to the thin struts. So thin struts, they are having uh, their own disadvantages in the form of uh, reduced uh, radial force, uh, reduced the uh, opening of the stent, uh, reduced the opposition of the stent with the vessel wall. So these are the possible uh, uh, challenges and uh, that's why they are in the, still in the trial phase. Uh, hypersensitivity reaction, uh, impact endothelialization and the uh, reduced radial force. These are three, uh, I think they are the uh, most disadvantages with these stents. So, do you think in the coming years, these uh, challenges can be overcome? Yeah, that's why. So, uh, as I told previously, cell palcitexel uh, were used now, biolimus is there. Mm -hmm. So, it is having less hypersensitivity reaction and the less impairment to the normal endothelialization and uh, more uh, it will be dedicated to uh, reduce the uh, hyper endothelialization effects. Uh, hence, uh, it will block the restylosis but will not hamper the normal endothelial. And also uh, with the newer uh, generation of metal, uh, especially uh, with alloy metals of platinum or cobalt, uh, radial force is also improved and uh, that's why uh, opposition of the vessel wall is also improved with the newer generations. Thank you for shedding light on it and I think it is so yeah. important to understand both the benefits and the potential risks also and to ensure the best outcomes. So now, Dr. Lastly, for clinicians who are just beginning to incorporate uh, these advanced stents into their practice, what are the key recommendations or tips you would like to offer regarding patient selection, stent implantation techniques uh, and post-procedural care? Yeah, so uh, I think uh, these are under trial phases only, especially we have to select the patients who are at the high risk of uh, uh, what we can say, uh, in restyled, uh, throb again, thrombosis of the stent, where we cannot give you antiplatelets for the long time. Uh, they are having some kinds of uh, contraindication to antiplatelets. So those are, the, I think, target uh, population of uh, for time being, as soon as we'll get more trial results, we can uh, extrapolate on the uh, uh, majority of the population. Yes, I think that is fantastic yeah. advice and your insights will surely guide many clinicians in adopting yeah. these new innovations as well, Doctor. So, as we wrap up today's session, Doctor, thank you so much for such an engaging and informative thank discussion. You. And to our listeners, we hope you found today's episode enlightening. And remember, if you're a healthcare professional who is eager to delve into medical topics or have questions, do not hesitate to join us on the Medicine Apps platform. Medicine Apps platform is not just a resource. It's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers, participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare. So until next time, stay curious and keep innovating.